here at the National Reptile Zoo in Kilkenny City, the new premises. James, you moved from Goran a few months ago and yep. things have been pretty exciting. Really exciting up until, uh, <laughs> <laughs> up until about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah so I moved, uh, what, three months ago? Okay. Two and a half, two and a half So months. you were in Goran for how many years? 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. And you'd obviously built it up to be you know, a huge success. Everybody knew you, everybody knew yeah, the yeah. Reptile Zoo. Um, and then you purpose built this am amazing place in Kilkenny. Um, and you opened the doors just after Christmas. Yep, everything going great. And really good. <laughs> yeah, everyone loved the new place, loved the new space, and mm. everything going fantastic, even and the animals. Of course, more yeah. importantly. Um, and so now, obviously, because of the coronavirus threat, you've had to close your doors to the yeah. public, but you're continuing to work with the animals and to feed them and to monitor them and everything. Yeah, so no matter what, like, even with the doors closed, like everything still has to be fed, has to be heated, has to be kept humid, you know, mm. just maintain the way they normally are. Okay, and so we say day-to-day -day stuff has to, has to go ahead, but like you're obviously interacting with the public because I see a lot of movement online mm. and social media. Yeah, we're trying to just trying to keep people still involved so they know what's actually going on. That is, you know, because people, people come, they visit the animals, they know the individual animals, and they're wondering how the animals are mm. getting on as well. Yeah, and how are they getting on? Are they okay? So, well, as far as they're concerned, there's no, there is no <laughs> virus out there. Everything is good, but yeah, everyone's doing good. And it's coming to spring as well, so everything's getting more active. Okay, so... The purpose of this is so that people can see behind the scenes what's happening. Even though the yeah. doors are closed to the public, um, everybody can actually look and see, follow you, you know, looking after the animals, day-to-day -day stuff, what goes on. And something very exciting happened yesterday with the Chinese alligator coming out of um, hibernation, which we're going to talk about. And so it's natural for them to be sort of in mud or in burrows. Kind of so burrow. it's a Chinese alligator. Okay. So she's gonna in China they, they burrow down like you know, 20 or 30 feet below the ground mm -hmm. and they'll spend their winter literally just in the burrow, just in the dam. So we gotta make sure she doesn't dry out so we give them mud to do that. Uh, we keep a check on them then every couple of days. So we're gonna give her a quick rinse. We'll put them inside into the, the habitat and just rinse some of the mud off and then Interaction she's had with anybody since she started to hibernate. Well, we've we've checked with her. We've, we check with her every three or four days. Okay. So she's um, she does you know she does see us, and even though she's hibernating, she's still relatively active. You know she still does stuff where she's like, she moves about. You can see her in the box. She wasn't she wasn't burrowed into the mud. She was starting to get active. The the temperatures like here at home it's, it's March and the temperatures have gone up. Well, we got up four or five degrees on average since the last maybe the last couple of months or so. So she's noticed that change as well. Um, even though she's in a secure box, but she still, she knows spring is coming, spring is here, so. Okay. If I take that for a minute, I'll take it closer. <laughs> okay, closer okay. Are typical of old tiny alligators, or? Yeah, as they get older, they do get a little bit darker. Cool. Okay, so what will happen for her then as she gets used to her enclosure here, her new habitat? So, what we're going to do is we're going to, because it's, it's late in the evening, so there's nobody about, all the staff are finished. Everyone's nice and quiet, so I'll give her a chance to kind of mooch about a bit and see what's actually going on. 
because this is a completely new habitat for her. This is like when she went into hibernation, it was in Gorn, in the last place that we were in. So we're completely different location. So she's woken up in a totally different place. So I want to give her plenty of time to just find her feet and see where she mm-hmm. what's going on. Like even adjusting to the light though, like does that take her some time and? A little bit. I mean, again, if you think about her in the wild, if she's, if she's down the burrow for six months, you know, it's pitch dark in the burrow. She comes out of the burrow when the spring comes. They do come out um, kind of on and off during the winter as well. But, you know, it, it, it's quite natural. She's still, uh, she's at, she's just up to come up to breeding size now. So a little bit. Can get a, a boy because we have no space in here for her. Okay. We need the, um, reptile equivalent of Scylla Black to help you out. Yeah, they're called the EEP, <laughs> European Endangered Species Program. So she is being, uh, she's part of the stud book. Okay. So what's the procedure then for something like this? I mean, you obviously have to have all the vitals and you know her health records and everything. Yeah. How do they decide if it's a good match and it's a good? Um... Uh, we deal with so there's a stud book keeper, so there's a guy in charge of the stud books okay. of, of each stud book for each species across Europe, and they control who breeds with what because you know they're they're looking back at the lineage to make sure we're not got we've not got any inbreeding issues or we're not got an animal that's has a physical deformity or something that might genetically carry on so you look for good good healthy animals so that's up to them to, to kind of sort that out um but yeah yeah we've already been in contact with the stubble keeper for this so we're just we're looking for a male so if she's too small for if we get a big male in here and she's too small you know the chances he could kill him so we've got to be careful as well so it's all about matching them up for size and they're actually really really rare there's only, I think there's only two only left in the world. And how did you acquire her? She unfortunately came for the pet trade. Okay. Yeah, somebody had her as a pet. Uh, and did you, did they contact you to come and take they, her? They did, in fairness, yeah. Because they, they that's quite good then, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's more responsible. At least they're Absolutely, not... Absolutely, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't dumped or sold on for, mm. you know, just for, for monetary value. It was given somewhere where she's going to hopefully make a difference and keep her in the 